Welcome back break timers. Today we're going over the 88 millimeter flat gun by Tamiya. It is a German of type with a series 36 or 37 option. Comes with lots of a little bit of extra parts, figurines, you got that rope, and also you have the advantage of building it in Japanese or well, if you're an American, you can use the good old English instructions. I will tell you that after reviewing this kit, after initially opening it, I was extremely happy with the type of um, materials that I was getting. The instructions were great. The stickers, uh, water decals were absolutely fabulous. Um, and they do have the markings for all the figurines for all of their ranks, which well, makes everything a lot cooler. As you can see, the sprues were actually really well um, done. There was some cleanup on the figurines. Now the figurines had creases on all of them. The face uh, on a couple of them had creases that ran all the way down the middle. And there was some cleaning up of that that needed to be done. But as far as the gun itself goes, there was hardly any cleanup on the parts whenever I was going through them. You can see that the rubber tires were um, in the kit. These are top quality of type. Meaning that when these uh, go on to the rims, they are, it's solid. There is no trying to finagle to get these on just right. It's not like an AMT kit. It is a great uh, kit with great parts. And I didn't really waste any time. I just got started on this bad boy and started getting it put together. One of the great things about this kit, not only did it come with figurines, but it came with a motorcycle. And well, that in itself was pretty darn cool. So I started working on the motorcycle first, getting it put together, and the parts were phenomenal. I had absolutely no issue getting the parts off the sprue. I had no issues with getting the parts actually onto the bike. And while you need to take your time when building these particular um, small 135th scale motorcycles because you don't wanna break anything, but it withstood a lot of handling to get everything perfect. I did put everything together and then start painting it once it was done. I tend to love doing that because, well, trying to get paint on paint to adhere to each other is, well, just not a good idea. So don't do it. But when I was done, I had this great little figurine. It was a two-seater motorcycle. Uh, when it gets done, it'll be painted up with leather seats, that German gray, black spokes, the white on the front for the for the numbering. And I just kept looking at this thing like, you know, this is what I expect. This is Tamiya. So quickly got back into getting those figurines together. This particular figurine that I'm cutting out right now is the gentleman that will be holding up the motorcycle saying, well, I'm ready to go get some new orders. Um, the, the detail on this figurine was as expected. Great. Came together in two pieces. Um, you had to fold the two bottom pieces together and put the arms on. I always wait for the helmet to go on last because it's easier to paint the um, figurine faces if you don't have the uh, helmet in the way. Now the glue that I'm using is uh, Tamiya's. And it is the thin cement that works by a capillary. I found that there are other options that are out there that could work. I do have the Ravel um, contact liquid special cement that would have worked just fine. But ten, I tend to take the liquid thin cement. I wait for it to get its solvent uh, solution to start softening up the plastic and once it starts to do that I move it the part on and off a little bit to get to create a little bit of a bond kind of get that plastic pulled up and then I hold those in place in, in about you know 30 seconds you're ready to let go and you got a pretty tight bond but like I said before the quality on these figurines were really well except for there was a lot of creases and stuff to get off the, underneath their arm in between their legs and well a lot of them had them straight up the middle of their face so that was disappointing in itself but not not too bad right because we know we can just clean it up and get it painted and I did use that method of using the uh, black paint a little bit of white on top to give some shadowing effects and then I layered in the painting doing um, 
some shading and it turned out pretty good now this is the base of the flat gun and i must say that when i was done with it i had a lot of options and colors this thing was german gray it was black it was yellow it was all kinds of different colors depending on where it was at and what part of the war that it was taking um place in but as you can see the flat gun itself base was um really highly detailed and very easy to put together you got um, a lot of different little things that go into play here, but you can definitely get the base done in an afternoon. Probably can get this whole done, uh, kit done probably in a weekend. I, I had mine stretched out for a bit because I didn't have that much time each day to work on it, but wanted to get it done. So quickly after I got the base completed, it started working on the actual gun itself. It was and pretty impressive. Like I said, from start to finish in all of this, and if it had absolutely no complaints on any of the parts going together, it was phenomenal. And it had that quality that Tamiya has always had. If you ever get a chance to go and look at the history of uh, Tamiya, I would definitely do it. Japanese com uh, company always have strived for the highest of quality on all of their models, with a few exceptions throughout life. But this is what I came up with whenever I was done. Fully articulating flat gun that had a screw uh, in the middle so it would go up and down onto the flat gun itself, holding it into position. Rotate it left to right, and it actually had the barrel that would be put together and then it would slide into place, including that holder right there that would go into place once you put the wheels on it. Now the wheels were assembled as well, and I started getting them painted up. So I got a flat German gray color applied to it really well. And then I go back with a very light uh, gray and I'm going to do some dry brushing. And as you can see, I got a little too much there, but that's okay because I'm gonna start spreading it out, taking it, doing a bunch of different things to it. But as you can see, the um, parts really start to pop when you're doing this. So what I'm trying to do is take it from new and give it some, a little bit of lightness as it's been out inside of the sun or it's gone down the road. Dry brushing is a great way to get some effects on pieces um, and making them look way, way better, more realistic than you can possibly think of. So take your time when you're doing this dry brushing. You wanna make sure you have as little paint as possible on it and then you take that and you dry brush over it and you'll realize that you'll have to keep doing that maneuver several times. But for the love of God, do not put too much paint on here when you try to do the dry brushing or else you're going to be very upset with the results that you're going to get. You did just see prior that the two pieces had definitely had a different look to them. Uh, one was untouched, one was dry brush. And so we're gonna finish up on all of these. So we've got uh, two pieces that will haul the flat gun. This is one section. There is another section that goes on to the backside. And with that being said, we're gonna get the tires put together. So the Tamiya tires are freaking phenomenal. They, they pop on, they're very tight. You, you don't even really need to put glue to get these to hold on. But if you don't want them to come off for sure, then yes, throw some glue on those. But the tires are with great detail and there is a ledge inside of the tire one being a wider version and then there's actually a lip that it actually shrinks down in size so it fits onto those rims only one direction so i'm just getting some of my tamiya kit um, weathering kit out and i'm doing some dry brushing of just some some dirt trying to get a little action inside the tires on the outside to give it kind of a worn look and when i'm done i get this came with all kinds of cartridges with with uh, ammunition and all kinds of other little uh shovels and and whatnot that you can place into a diorama i was very happy with the way that this kit came together just a regular just straight out of the mill paint 
uh, with a little bit of dry brushing over uh, top of that and then the decals. Well, decals went on before the dry brushing, but you get the point. There wasn't a lot of painting or special stuff that was done. Literally German gray with dry brushing over the top of it to give it its colors. It's the same thing with the base, which was that yellow with a little bit of um, grime and stuff like that put into it. Now I wanted to show you the process of the figurines. Figurines again were German gray. I went ahead and also did the boots with a black rubber by AK and then I actually put a regular black thinned out over the top of that to give it more of kind of like a cleaner look to the top of the boot. And then underneath of the model itself, um, I had to go back. You'll see later on that there's that, that uh, stripe that goes down the side that's actually part of the mold. So I did go back and remove that. I was trying to move as fast as I could because I had a lot of figurines to get painted up. I had a lot of stuff going on. And as you know, and when you're doing these things, sometimes you won't do something, but it bothers you so dang bad that you just go back and you fix it and then you just start over when you should have done it in the first place. So here's me texturing the boots with a little bit of black on top of that black rubber. Wanted it to dry a lot lighter, which it did, and it kind of gave me that kind of a shinier appearance towards the top, dull towards the bottom where the boot would be worn. And, and then I put a little bit of dirt on top of that. Did get the gloves and I just did a regular leather kind of canvas brown on that just to kind of go with the color that I wanted for their gloves. And it started to come together really, really well. Um, what I tend to do is I run that black over the straps and all and the belt and all that good stuff. And then I'll go back through it and then I'll color, um, fix the coloring with that German gray to define all my edges. This was part of that time where I should have cleaned it before I got started on it. And I had to go back and clean up those edges. And I simply just went back over the top of it with the paint colors that I was using. And then I sealed them afterwards and I think they turned out well. I'm not that great when it comes to figurines um, with faces. They tend to have that kind of crazy look on them. But I have been practicing a lot of different methods and that's because I do have lots of other people that I follow to try to learn things that I don't necessarily do a lot or that I'm not necessarily good at that I wanna get better with. Now you can see with this, I just went back and touched it up. There was some dry brushing that I did over the top of this as well. I wanted to give the guys that were carrying the ammunition a look of, well, they are slightly dirty from just holding these um, ammunition containers up against themselves or they're ca uh, carrying the rounds back and forth or they're getting soot on their hands or their uh, their pants or jacket from the shells that are landing on the ground so it was a fairly you know straightforward process typically when you see people putting figurines together we're gonna go ahead and spray that matte black uh, primer all over it to give them the shadows and then we're gonna do white from the very top of their head straight down. Uh, not a lot, but just enough to create lighter points uh, over, the, over the darkness that we're using for our folds and our creases. And then if you follow uh, Night Shift at all, you'll see a process that he uses and he names it glazing, which is taking very thin uh, coats of paint of the color that you would like to get onto the figurine and putting it in layers. The more you put on, the less of the definition that will come out. Uh, the less that you put on, the more variation in the colors that you're going to see. So if you're doing a brushing in this on, say, camo green, olive drab, and you're doing it in small increments, you're going to have the little um, creases in the pants are going to be a lot darker than, say, the rest of the figurine that you know you um that you have the lighter colors on so that's it's like pre-shading right so you were pre-shading and then we're putting the colors over the pre-shading and we're keeping a lot of the pre-shading that we want and then we can cover up the stuff that we don't struggle want. to try to get most of this on film because i'm not really set up for it on the other side of my bench but what i simply did was get some sculpt mold 
and I placed it on some cardboard after I had primered the top of it to keep it from absorbing any of the water. Smoothed it out, created some rough edges around the outside, and then created some smooth edges in the middle. Uh, the smoothness in the middle is going to be for the dirt, the rough edges around the outside are going to be for the grass, and of course I created a entrance for this on one side where it looks like there will be a dirt road that will go into it. So I took it everything where I wanted it. I took some of the um, Woodland Scenics paint and you can either use it as a wash or you can just use it directly on it. I like to use it directly on it because it gives me that green undertones that I want with my grasses. And once it's on there, you're just kind of brushing it around, making sure you get all the little pockets out. Once all the little pockets are out, then we can move on to getting some of the dirt tones. So this is the earth undertone, um, actually grass undertone from Woodland Scenics. All right, well, with that being the grass undertones, these are the dirt undertones from Woodland Scenics. And this is just um, their version of earth tones that comes in a nice little earthy brown. Now, I really do enjoy Woodland Scenics products, and they're very easy to work with. And then the end results of these are always extremely realistic, if done correctly. All right, so this is where it gets crazy. I took some fake fur that I picked up at my local fabric store. This happens to be kind of like a rabbit fur that they had in stock. And what I'm going to do with this is mix it up. And when I'm done doing that, it looks a lot like, well, grass. What I'm gonna be doing is taking those sections of grass, cutting strips of um, it off, and then adhesing it to the diorama by using some of my Woodland Scenics glue. And well, without wasting a whole bunch of time, let's see what this looks like once we are done. Ta-da! A little bit of Woodland Scenics fine turf, along with, um, well, some blended turf of different types, but um, it came together. And as you can see, between the gummy bears and the rest of it, that these guys uh, really look like they're out in the middle of a field um, trying to get their stuff put together, right? So the entire time I'm building this, I'm thinking of that particular scenario, right? I'm thinking, okay, where's this gun gonna be at? Where do we normally see these? We see them out in fields. They have a clear shot up into the sky for whenever the bombing raids are coming through. Um, it sat really well inside of the diorama. There's not a lot to really go into detail with it. It was basically dyeing that fake fur with some green tint with the Woodland Scenics putting the figurines basically into some positions that can be moved. And as you can see, I opted to keep it apart. Now this black gun does come to uh, have lots of different abilities, right? So you can put the wheels on the front and back of it and turn it into a trailered flat gun. You can leave it off like I did and have it set up so it's actively shooting up in the air or getting ready to the endless endless amounts of options on this um particular build so why don't i throw some pictures in what this thing looked like and voila i think it turned out pretty good uh i used the yellow to show the colors that it could have been if it was all yellow i used the german gray obviously uh for the gun dry brushed on some wear and tear to it and did the same with the wheels for if and when they wanted to take it and trailer it. Now I could take this right off the diorama, trailer it like they're getting ready to leave or whenever I get another vehicle later on from Tamiya, I can pull the gun behind it. Hope this was helpful. There wasn't a lot that I actually did with the diorama other than put down the grass, use a little bit of dry turf and then put the model itself on top of it. I just wanted to make sure that you guys had a chance to kind of look at it and chuckle at the little uh, gummy bear. And I always wanted to remind everybody, as always, that if you're liking the content that you're getting, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, if you're gonna be doing the hobby, remember to be enjoying yourself 
while in it. Until next time, see you guys 